In today's video, we're going to revisit an old project for a very good reason. Uh, the project we're going to revisit is this one here, which was the uh, Schmidt Trigger Oscillator. Uh, this oscillator was featured uh, initially in video number 87 that's shown here that described how the oscillator works and, uh, and how you can build your own. And it was also featured in the next video, number 88, which showed how to use this oscillator to do a very uh, cheap and easy uh, time domain reflectometer to measure coax. Uh, I'd also uh, done another video on TDRs using a signal generator, number 37, and of course uh, the theory that was presented in that video is certainly applicable to uh, what we're doing in video number 88 with uh, this oscillator. This oscillator was also used uh, in uh, video 90 which shows how to measure capacitors and inductors with some basic parts. It essentially used this oscillator as a source to, uh, to measure uh, capacitors and inductors. And then uh, also video number 62, 162 I should say, uh, this one here uh, shows you how to measure coax velocity factor and impedance but all using the same technique. Uh, I think this video also used a signal generator but this, this could be used in its place. So needless to say this was a very uh, popular uh, oscillator and I used it in a number of places. Now I'll put links to uh, each of these videos here in the video description just down below the video here in YouTube. Uh, but the reason that we're revisiting this project is because one of my YouTube viewers and fellow ham radio operator, uh, Marcus Jenkins, this is his QSL card, EA5IGC, who is from the uh, southeast portion of Spain, was kind enough to actually design a PC board uh, that uh, could be used to build this circuit, and certainly a whole lot neater than my uh, little uh, you know, cobbled together ugly construction type design here. So I, I thought I'd just uh, do this you know, mainly to show Marcus how well his board worked and how it compares in performance uh, to my hand-built uh, prototype. So this was, uh, you know, Marcus was kind enough to send me a board. There's actually a link on here that you can go to Marcus's blog and he'll describe this board and have a schematic and things like that. And I think he's even got uh, some information on that site where you can order your own boards from the same source uh, that, uh, that he had uh, fabricate these. So let's go take a look at how uh, my circuit performs and how Marcus's performs to see how close they are. All right, so let's start by looking at my little hand-built uh, prototype here. Connect up a BNC to hook into channel one. I've got channel one set to a 50 ohm internal uh, termination. We'll hook up the uh, power supply here and turn on the power. So we can take a look here and see that uh, I'm running at about uh, 6.1 kilohertz. Rise time about 1.8 to 1.9 nanoseconds. Fall time is on the order of about 600 picoseconds. So, uh, so that little hand-built prototype uh, worked pretty well. In fact, that fall time is pretty pretty quick. So, um, in fact, if we zoom in, let's zoom in on that rising edge. You can see the you know the ringing on the rising edge. We saw that when we built it originally. And uh, if we simply switch our to trigger on the falling edge. We'll look, take a look what the falling edge looks like. Really, really fast. Again, about 600 picoseconds. Okay, so uh, let's go take a look at uh, how Marcus's circuit performs. Now when I put his circuit together, I put the connector on the same side as uh, all of the components. Uh, and I know that's uh, opposite what he did uh, that shows on his blog. And, um, and it's going to make it a little bit trickier for me to hook up the power. But let's, uh, let's go set this up. Okay, we're all hooked up. Let me flip the power on here and see what we've got. So it looks like we're running uh, frequency-wise about 4.8 kilohertz, and uh, I've had a lot of people who built this circuit say the same thing that uh, they built it using the same components that I built on this, and they were seeing a little bit lower operating frequency. I was seeing about 6 kilohertz. This one's running about 4.8 kilohertz. You know, I look at it and say that's not important at all for the applications that I use this circuit for. The purpose was really to get a really fast edge. The repetition rate didn't matter so much. So whether your circuit's running at 3 kilohertz or 5 or 6, it doesn't really matter. Look at that rise time. I was seeing it was 1.8, 1 1.9, you know, 2 nanoseconds. That's basically the same that we saw with my hand-built prototype. And fall time, you know, 550 picoseconds. That's actually even a little bit faster than my hand-built prototype. And that's not surprising because I got some flying leads here. If we zoom in again on that edge, 
The rising edge looks very, very similar. Same amount of ringing that, uh, that I had on mine. That's just characteristic, I think, of the driver and the driver impedance. And again, let's go to the trigger and flip to the negative edge. And that falling edge looks really nice and sharp, you know, about 550 picoseconds. So, uh, so Marcus, fine job. And uh, kudos, thank you for sending me the board and uh, making it available. And again, I will put a link um, to Marcus's blog that describes this board in the uh, video notes below. Anyway, just a short video this weekend, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, Marcus, thanks again.